Hello everyone. Uh, REST is highly used uh, in today's uh, web applications, in almost all web applications basically. So I thought uh, maybe it's a good idea to give you a brief idea what is REST. So REST is basically uh, uh, used or uh, applied uh, on top of HTTP or hypertext uh, transfer protocol. So HTTP is an application layer protocol uh, through which you can uh, transfer uh, documents or uh, pages or any other uh, messages. Uh, for example, uh, in the form of HTML. So HTTP was designed uh, for communication between web browsers uh, and web servers. So using your web browser, you can send any request to a application server or a web server, uh, let's say to other applications. Since H uh, REST is based on HTTP, uh, HTTP also has some common methods or operations like GET, POST, PUT and DELETE for various purposes. And those are analogous to various database commands like for GET, or to retrieve some messages or resources uh, in HTTP or in REST, we can use uh, GET. Uh, for updating or creating new resources, we can use either uh, POST or PUT, uh, depending on what type of resource, a resource is, it, it is. And also for deleting or removing a resource from your uh, database, for example, you can use, use a simple delete method. Uh, because uh, HTTP is very simple, uh, the, the applications uh, that are designed using REST, RESTful principles or REST is also uh, very simple to use uh, uh, in terms of uh, development and in terms of consuming the services. In uh, web applications or in the web uh, web world, there are three basic components like uh, firewalls, uh, routers, and, and caching or caches. So what firewall does, it decides which one, which message, uh, if, if I think about it as a HTTP message, so which HTTP message will be accepted uh, and uh, will be uh, sent both from and to uh, uh, your browsers and the application server. So the firewall basically controls the web security, uh, the web security of in terms of your, in terms of your machine or browser, and also the security in terms of uh, the application server or web server. And then we also have routers. So we uh, everybody has routers in their home as a, as a Wi-Fi. Uh, 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 hardware but there are also other uses for router so it basically send or forward the messages and if a router can forward a message to multiple users or to multiple uh, uh, requests it can handle then it comes to the scaling uh, scaling part so the web scaling is handled by routers because it can send and forward all the requests and responses uh, so depending on how many users it can handle, it uh, refers to the web scaling. And then also there is the caching. So this is another uh, aspect of uh, or important aspect of HTTP or REST where you can uh, store uh, certain data temporarily. And for having the same data, the users don't need to send duplicate or redundant requests to the web server. So in this way, it, uh, it does not overload the network and it, uh, it can basically maximize uh, the speed. But this firewall routers and caches, they don't look into your message. So the web message is, is composed of two parts, uh, mainly the he header and the payload. So the HTTP header, it contains the metadata and the payload contains the actual message or the body of the message. 
So all these web components like firewall, routers and caches, they look into your HTTP header to decide if it should be accepted or where it should be uh, redirected and so on. And then once uh, the message is accepted or uh, the message is redirected to a proper destination, the users or the, or the requester uh, use this payload to read the actual, actual, actual message. So what is REST? Uh, REST was a very new uh, term even uh, 10 years ago and uh, in his uh, PhD thesis Roy Fielding uh, it's around uh, in I think in the year of 2000, uh, 2000 he introduced this term REST which leverage uh, the benefits of HTTP and he proposed REST, uh, REST architectural uh, pattern uh, that have some uh, design principles let's say you want to make your applications uh, more uh, uh, flexible efficient fast secured and highly autonomous uh, from the uh, customers or clients then you should uh, consider a rest uh, to design your applications so rest basically propose a set of uh, design patterns or some design principles if uh, you apply them your application will be uh, uh, highly secured uh, super fast and manageable uh, in today in today's world uh, web world so here is a simple example why uh, and how rest is uh, so useful uh, as i mentioned uh, REST is designed around the resources. So traditionally, uh, the web applications or web services, they were uh, designed around uh, jobs or tasks. So when we are creating a web service, we were developing a service, a task that can do some dedicated job. But when the REST was introduced, uh, it considered everything that we have on the web or in the internet as resources. So client uh, consider whatever information we have around us as resources. Let's say uh, in this picture, client want to get information about a flight that is Boeing 747 uh, about a plane basically. So he uh, we have in the internet at some places and in some places we have this information stored so the client send a request uh, in the in the form of an url uh, using a http method let's say uh, the method get here in, in response to which uh, the web server or the application server will send a document uh, in this case uh, let's say a, an html document uh, to the client where it will have all the information uh, about this resource. So in this case, Boeing 747 resource. Let's say how much is the full requirements for this plane, what is the maintenance schedule and so on. So the bottom line here is the client references a web resource using a URL. It, you can also call it URI, Uniform Resource Identifier here. Uh, the 747 is a identifier uh, for this resource. Uh, every resource has a representation. In this case, it was an HTML. It can be in any other form. And when the client selects a link, in the rest it is known as hyperlink. Uh, in this document, let's say fuel requirements is a link or a hyperlink maintenance schedule is a link there might be other multiple links provided as part of the re uh, response uh, to the request that is that was sent by uh, the client so client can follow these links uh, to further move on so this is called in other words in rest state, tra state transition and since for each transition, we are change, we might change the representation and also 
uh, for each transition we might get new states or new links and we we are transferring from uh, one state to another trans state in the application this is how the name uh, basically was proposed so representational state transfer uh, in general rest is not a standard uh, rest uh, does not provide any strict uh, specification or rule uh, let me see why my video was uh, appeared and REST does not provide any standard, so there is no specification by uh, W3C, for example, or there is no specific tool for uh, REST by IBM or any other uh, providers. REST is simply a design pattern. It's simply a, a architectural style that you should follow if you, if you want your applications uh, to be more uh, efficient if you want to serve more customers if you want your applications to be stateless meaning that you don't store any user data uh, in your server so uh, among those standards a uh, few of them are uh, http so http is the baseline for rest you must use http if you uh, are trying to implement your application as a restful service you, obviously you need URL or URI uh, to identify your resources uh, since you have resources resources might have multiple representations it can be even a text document it can be an XML it can be an HTML even it can be an image or PDF and so on so those are various resource representation and then there are resource type that you need to also mention in your uh, application design so if your app resource type let's say an xml then the standard type is text slash xml if your app, uh, if your resource is an html which is a text type then your resource type will be text slash html and so on also for example if your resource is an uh, is a gif file which is a type of image then your resource type will be image slash gif so in that in that way there are hundreds of resource types so that was uh, a basic idea on uh, rest and now let's uh, give an example uh, a practical example how rest web services or restful web services work in practice so let's say we have a web service from a company uh, parts depot and this parts depot provides a web service uh, so that the clients or the users can get a list of their parts they can get detailed information about a part they can even purchase or submit a purchase order uh, through their uh, web service or through their uh, website so in this case uh, my video is always uh, going away what parts depot will do it will uh, develop a service and their service will be obviously resource based service so one service for example get a list of parts so here parts is the resource and they will provide you a url for example in this form partsdepot.com slash parts which, which if you using which if you make a request let's say get and then this url slash parts it will give all the parts that uh, that company has and in this way one thing is ensured ensured that the client and the application are highly uh, are loosely coupled basically the the client is not dependent on the application and the application is not dependent on the client so anyone who has this URL anyone who is uh, authenticated uh, to make this request they can uh, get the list of parts and when uh, so as I mentioned already that rest is designed uh, along the resources and each resource has an identifier and when you make a request 
uh, on the, using that URL, uh, let's say using the HTTP GET method, you can get a list of uh, links in your response. So let's say they have five, uh, four parts, and each part has a unique link. So they have parts from three, four, five until three, four, eight. Uh, with this response, what user can do, he can further follow one of these links and uh, get further information about the parts, about the specific parts. So that is another service. So with one service, we, we got the list of all the parts. And with another service, uh, what we can do, we can get uh, more detail about a specific parts. And for doing that, user can get make another request. Let's say get and then partsdepot.com slash parts slash uh, an ID of the part uh, of an of, of a part. So this is the first part basically. And by organizing resources in this way using the slash, basically you are branching the resources. So we had four parts and now if we have add another uh, node or item in our request URL, we can further dig down on that uh, specific part. And when the user will send another guest method using this URL, he will get basically uh, more detail about that part 00345. So which, which has an ID, which has a name, which has some description, uh, some specification, uh, which also had an URL itself, uh, what is the price and so on, and how many they have in their inventory. And as you can see, uh, the response that we received is in a XML format, but it can be in JSON, it can be in any other format, it can be even in PDF. But using an XML and JSON, gives uh, more flexibility for the client-side application developers, uh, let's say in, in, in terms of parsing, and you can easily follow or uh, visit this link by parsing this XML or it, even it could be a JSON. So once the user got this XML response, he can basically uh, follow this link and these are known as hyperlinks in REST and when the user follow this link further using let's say another get method he basically moved from one state to another state and this is called state transition in REST. I hope uh, I could give a basic idea and overview uh, on REST and uh, in the today's world, uh, REST is already a dominant uh, uh, design uh, pattern for web applications. Uh, there are other design, uh, web application design principles, but those are not useful for large-scale web applications. Thank you.